Good morning, Nancy. Hi, Charlotte. I'm so good to see you. Hi, Kat. So good to see you. Hi, Claire. What a nice surprise. So the props that we're going to use today, um, we're actually going to use a chair. If you have a chair, it can also be in the edge of a couch or a bed or a stool. If you have yeah, really anything there where you can create a ledge for yourself that's chair-like. Um, but if you have a dining room chair, that would be my version. And then you're going to want two blocks if you have them or two sturdy books, a bolster if you have a bolster. If not, grab two blankets. I think if you have blankets um, as the option to use like uh, bath towels or if you don't have bath or if you don't have like sturdier bath towels, beach towels work really well as well for practice. Um, so as we're gathering props, we'll get settled in just a minute or two. Welcome. Well, welcome. Um, we just had a couple others pop in. So I'm gonna repeat the props that you need for this morning. If you have a dining room chair or if you have a yoga chair, grab it. If you don't have a chair that um, is sturdy, you can use the edge of a bed or even like a stool. And then we're also gonna use two blocks if you have them. If you have a bolster, that's, um, that's sort of the first choice. If you do not have a yoga bolster, grab two blankets for practice. And welcome, welcome. Good morning, Nancy. Um, good morning, Zach. See who else has joined. Good morning, Jennifer. Good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Annie. Welcome. Welcome. I just shared a suggested playlist. If you want to use a playlist, you're welcome to just turn it on now. It's just some soft, soft gentle music. Um, and welcome joining and logging in. I'm Kat, if I don't know you. I think I've seen most of you, so welcome. We're going to use for practice today. If you have a bolster, grab a bolster. If you don't have a bolster, grab two blankets or two sturdy um, beach towels work really nicely or bath towels. And then you'll also want two blocks for practice. And we're gonna add in a chair today for a practice. And the chair can really look like anything. It can be a dining room chair. It can be the edge of a couch. If you're close to the, a bed, you can be next to um, an edge of a bed just for that portion and sequencing of, of the practice. If you have your bolster or your blanket, let's get started in a Sukhasana, seated in Sukhasana. and take either your bolster or your blanket and really sit onto the edge of it and come with your legs crossed and try to see if you can switch so that it's your unnatural crossing of your legs at your ankles so maybe it's 
your opposite foot in front and just take a moment to switch that direction so that when you come to sit, you're coming into a space that feels like it's a little bit of effort. And then just for now, take your palms, turn your palms down so that your palms are really almost like making a glove to fit on top of your kneecap. And almost like it's a good fit. So really starting to connect the lower body to the upper body and the upper body to the lower body. And then just for a moment, see if you can start to tilt yourself forward just slightly. Notice what's in front of you. Notice what's behind you. Notice what's to the left, what's to the right, what's up and what's down. And then really see if you can put yourself in the middle of all those things. In front of you is your pubic bone and behind you is your tailbone. So as you start to come a little bit more forward, I want you to think about tilting from your pelvis. That's gonna draw your pubic bone forward up towards your sternum, but it's also gonna allow your tailbone to draw back and down. And then think your hips move out to their own side. So you're really creating a little bit more space and a little bit more equilibrium through your low back at your sacrum. Today's practice is all about folding. And when we fold, we're really using the crease at our pelvis and our hips. So you're really starting to become a little bit more comfortable with where that is in our body. And then close your eyes for a moment or take your gaze down towards maybe just one focal point down and closing the eyes feels like it's too much today. And then again, notice what's in front, what's behind, what's to your left, to your right, and what's up and down. And so when we do that, we're really starting to become more aware. And when we're aware of what's around us, we can start to focus on where we are in the moment. It's almost like drawing our own personal GPS. We really kind of, we are the pinpoint at the center. So we start to feel ourselves all around us in our circumstance in the moment. And then maybe setting an intention for the practice. Folding practice is really about going inward. And so maybe noticing simple habits, maybe observing something that you need to shed from your exterior so you can create more space on the interior. Maybe it's just an offering for someone, maybe a loved one far away, maybe even a loved one that's close by. And whatever your intention is, take your hands together to seal that intention. Anjali Mudra, hands still at the heart. Really touch your thumbs to your sternum at your heart. And then so you can lift your heart up a little bit into your thumbs. And then bow the chin to the chest. Take a moment here, just a breath to open our practice, sealing our intention. Take a deep, full breath, inhale, fill up. Open part the lips, exhale, let the breath out. And then blink the eyes open, namaste, welcome everyone. Take your hands next to your hips and then just lean back, switch the cross of the ankles so that you're coming into your more familiar See, Your favorite ankle is on. Is and then from here, sit up nice and tall and then start to tuck the chin back into your, to, into your chest. And then slowly just drawing a line, an imaginary line with your chin, start to take your chin over your left collarbone, maybe you gaze over the left, over towards the left side of the room. And then from here, trace that same line, take your chin again, almost like it's touching your collarbone, draw an imaginary line over your right collarbone, over towards your right side, maybe looking over your right shoulder. And then do that two more times. Tuck your chin in, draw that imaginary line, come all the way over to the left. And then again, tuck your chin in, draw that imaginary line, go all the way over and back to the right side. Go back over to the left side again, tuck your chin in, go over to the left side. And then this time, pick up your left hand. So you're gazing to the left, take your left hand up and over. And then maybe you take your hand on top of your head, putting a little bit of gentle pressure. Maybe you start to put a little bit more pressure into your right, sh right, right shoulder a little bit. If you want to go deeper with this, flex your right palm. That might mean picking your right palm up and off the ground. So you're getting a little bit more to the scaling muscles from here. Just a nice, gentle, easy neck stretch. Keep the spine nice and long, everybody. That's it. And then add one more breath. Take a full breath in. Exhale. Release your left hand down. And then again, retrace that line. Chin to collarbone. Come all the way over to the right side. And then if you want more, pick up your right hand. So same side of the body. Right hand, 
right gaze over the shoulder, take it just to the top of your head. And then stay, this feels like it's enough for the moment. Or if you want more, pick up your left fingertips, start to flex the palm. Really observing where you are right now. So when we move side to side in our bodies, we're really kind of moving with time. We're noticing where we wake up in the morning, noticing that first few moments of dawn. And then we travel around ourselves, finding dusk. But we also meet ourselves in the middle, we find noon. We start to see ourselves and how we spend our own time. And then release your right hand down, tuck your chin back into the chest. And then slowly take the gaze forward so we look all forward together. That's it. Keep your left leg in front of you, everybody. And then take your right knee back. I want you to take your right knee so it's right, right about touching to the sole of your left foot. And if you have a blanket, you might have to adjust the blanket a little bit from here. And your right hip is going to be off the ground a little bit, and that's okay. So I actually want you to kind of take your right, take your right hand. Let's do this together. Take your right hand underneath your right sits bones and just see how much space there is. And there might be some, there might be none, and that's okay. Really just sort of observing where that is. And then from here, take your hands. You're gonna take your left hand. If you haven't done this before, watch me for the first one. Take your left hand to your left kneecap again, really holding it like you would a glove to a ball. Pick up your right hand, right hand to right ankle, right hand to right ankle. So we're gonna do a little bit of rocking forward and back. It goes like this if you haven't done this before. You're gonna rock your torso forward. As you do that, your right hand is gonna pick up your right foot. And then when you lean back, your hand is gonna lift your, you lift your left knee up. And so start to do that. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Um, so start to do that a couple of times. As you rock forward, pick up your right ankle. As you rock back, the left knee lifts. And I want you to just sort of get into a rhythm where you're using the breath with the movement. And then really kind of finding yourself in the middle of this space. And this is a nice hip opener. We're gonna do a lot of hip opening today, but also a lot of folding so we can get into the hips a lot. And so just observing what comes up. Maybe one side feels a little bit better. Maybe one side you can go further than the other. That's it. I'll check and see how we're all doing. That's it. Even more, Michelle, you can really kind of dip all the way down and lift all the way back up. That's it. And then pause when you finish, come all the way back through center. If you came off the blanket like me, just readjust yourself. And then from here, take your hands off of your ankles, everybody. Walk your hands back a little bit. I like to tend my fingertips. And with the right leg, you're going to lift your right leg up and then lower it down. Do that 10 times. So you're really opening into that outer IT band a little bit more. And you may not be able to have the same range of motion as me, and that's okay. Just go to an edge that feels like it's work. Go to a part of the body that feels like you can sort of feel it, but also the gentle release into the hips. And then start to length the breath with the movement. Start to notice just if you can breathe in or if you're holding the breath at all. Using an open mouth exhale. And then once you finish your 10 rounds, if you've lost count, just do two more. Come all the way back, set your right knee back down. And then sit back up tall, reach your arms up and over the head, and then rotate to the left. Take your right hand to your left knee, and then take your left hand back on behind you. Really tense your left fingertips behind you like a second spine. Root down to lift a little bit taller up. And then see if you can really turn your right shoulder a little bit more towards the left knee. Right shoulder turns a little bit more towards the left knee. If you want to stretch a little bit more through the neck today, maybe stay if this is enough, or if you want to stretch a little bit more, start to gaze again over your left shoulder. And then just observe. Observe where you can go a little bit deeper. Can you root your sits bones down? Think about plugging your right hip back into the socket to bring your left knee a little bit more forward into the right hand. And then one more breath together. Breathe in. Exhale, breathe out. Rotate back to center, everybody, and then just take your hands next to your hips, and then just kind of remeasure with your mind. See if your right hip now is a little bit more closer to the ground. It should be. It might even start to touch. Maybe I'll just see some nods, yes or no. Yes. <laughs> some yes, some no. Maybe that Charlotte's at least saying yes. And then take your hands back from behind you. Turn onto your feet. 
Turn your feet forward so they're pointing a little bit more, um, to your feet are pointing a little bit more towards 12 o'clock. And then drop your knees to the right. Turn your knees back through the center. Drop your knees to the left. We're gonna do that two more times. Knees through center, knees to the right. Maybe you gaze to the left to get the neck involved. Knees through center, over to the left, gaze to the right. And the next time you come all the way to the right, allow the knees to land to the right side. And then start to set up here on the second side. So this set up here is actually called a sage twist, but we're using it more for some hip mobility today. And then really set yourself up so that your foot is directly, your right sole of your foot is directly underneath your left knee. And then left hand comes to left ankle, actually grab a hold of the ankle, and then take your right hand directly on top of your right knee. So we're gonna start with that rocking horse motion. You can start any way that feels better for you. Maybe go a little bit slower. Just go for about 10 rounds, but really pick up the ankle with the hand. That's gonna help open up the hip. So you're really getting a little bit more of that mobility into the hip. That's it, Anne, good. All right, so if you've lost count, just do three more. Two, and then take one more. Come all the way back up through center. And I forgot to measure on the first side, but just take a moment to measure. Notice even if this side feels like it's easier because you've opened up through the first side, maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but just always noticing without any judgment. So take your left hand to your left leg bone, and then just notice how much space is towards the blanket or towards the ground. Noticing without any judgment. That's it. And then from here, start to take your hands just back and behind you. Keep your right knee rooted. Lift your left knee up. And again, one side might go higher than the other, and that's okay. Lift your left knee up and then set your left knee back down. Do that 10 times. Lift your knee up, set it down. That's it. Lift your knee up, set it back down up and down. So it's almost like a little bit of a lever, moving with space. I have four, if you're on the same count as me, do three. If you're not on the same count, when you're ready to be done, finish those last 10 rounds, and then set all the way down. And then sit it back nice and tall. Take your twist, take your left hand across to your right knee. Take your right hand back up behind you. Tend the fingertips, lengthen through the spine. And then you can stay the gaze just over towards your right side. If you wanna really get a little bit deeper today, maybe take the gaze over your right shoulder. So especially in the gentle flow practice, some days we just want to kind of back off a little bit. And if that's where you're feeling today, feel free to back off. I know here in Virginia, it's a really rainy day. So I always think it's like the perfect opportunity to practice yoga on these rainier days where we maybe feel like we're um, one little bit of movement, but we don't want to go too deep or too far. So you're really meeting yourself where you are, practicing where you are right now in the moment. And then stay for one more breath, breathe in. Exhale, breathe out. And then inhale, rotate the torso all the way back. And then just re-measure. Take your left hand. Maybe the left buttock bone is actually touching down now. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Just kind of noticing and seeing where you are. And then we're going to switch and transition. Straighten through both legs. And then just for a moment, windshield wiper the legs side to side. You can windshield wiper the feet a little bit side to side. And then we're gonna come over into a child's pose. Have your props handy. Have two blankets, have your blankets handy. Or if you have your bolster, have your bolster handy. Just so you have it for this next flow and series. Come into a child's pose. Take your knees wide today, everybody. So take your knees a little bit wider towards the outside edges of the mat, and then try to get your big toe bounds together to touch. Straight your arms out in front of you for a child's pose. Rest your forehead down. And so notice here if there's any sort of ease that you want to take. Maybe you take your blanket and you take your blanket so it tucks underneath your hips and your heels. Or you find a more traditional child's pose. And we're just going to be here for one more breath. 
and so start to lengthen through all four sides of the torso the front the back the right the left and exhale allow the rest to settle in inhale come forward to your table pose just for a moment if you use that blanket and child take it off to the side come forward for, for table pose i'm just going to go through just a little bit of a modified flow Come into your hands and knees, spread the hands evenly and well, set the shoulders on top of the wrists, and then draw the hips right on top of the knees from here. On an inhale, push the hands down, round the spine, find your cat pose, and then exhale, come back to your child's pose, hips back to the heels. You might have to straighten the arms out in front of you a little bit. We'll do that two times. Inhale, roll the spine forward, come into your table pose. Cat pose, push the hands down, tuck the chin and brown the spine. Really feel the fold here, pull from the hip crease, stretch the arms out in front for child's pose. Do that one more time. Inhale, come forward to table pose, hands and knees. Really lengthen your sternum forward, maybe take the gaze forward even. Cat pose, push the hands down, inhale as you round the spine. Exhale, refold into child's pose. Hinge from the hips, stretch the arms out in front of you. And then slowly, mindfully, look forward. Walk the hands back, sit back onto the heels. And we're going to set up for our first restorative posture, which is going to be a restorative child's pose. If you have any knee issues, I'm going to give you an, alter an alternate pose. Child's pose with a bolster, if you have a bolster, you're going to draw the knees around the bolster, walk the hands out in front of you, and you can turn one cheek to the side. Start with your favorite side to look towards. If you don't have a bolster, you're going to take your blankets, and you're going to fold your blankets. The best way to do this, if you have two blocks as well, you really want to bring the ground up to you in these poses. So if you don't have a bolster, everybody take your two blocks, underneath your blanket, then set the blanket on top. Then you'll come back down into your child's pose. And so close the eyes here, start to come into a rest, and we'll be in this pose about three minutes on one side, and then we'll switch and do um, the second side. So as you start to come into this pose, we'll just bring a little bit of awareness into the body. And if you can't do it with your knees, have the blankets out in front of you. We're gonna still do a fold. You're gonna come onto your buttock bone. Your legs are gonna be straight. And this is where that, um, if, you, if you can, you can walk your hands on top of the bolster, on top of the blankets. You really wanna fold from the hips so your knees can be bent and your forearms can rest down. Even if that feels like it's too demanding, you can also come onto the edge of your chair or you can use the edge of the blanket, have the legs wide, and rest the forearms onto the edge of a chair or the edge of a blanket to get at the hip crease and fold. Okay, so lots of options. If you, um, I do watch the screen. So if you are practicing and you're needing a modification, just wave at me and can tell you perhaps some suggestions.
start to turn your cheek to the opposite side if you haven't done so already. Finding that balance in the neck. And if your feet fall asleep, which sometimes happens in this pose, you might consider lifting yourself up or you can always come into a downward facing dog if that feels like a better option to get out any stagnation in the body. And as you come on to the second side, really allow yourself to begin to settle in. So begin to notice, we'll do some body mapping with this second side for the next two minutes. Start to really notice where you are right now in this moment. Notice what's to the left of you. Notice what's to the right of you. Just use your imagination through all of it. So time moves around us. We use circular objects to often measure time. Most clocks are circular. They move from 1 to 12 and have 24 hours in the day. And we're each given the same amount of time. But what we choose to do with that is really up to us. And so really part yourself into this place of observing where you woke up in the morning, maybe actually feeling that space, that bed, maybe noticing the first thoughts that popped up into your mind, just being aware, aware without judgment. And then start the breath over on your left collarbone. As you inhale, imagine the breath traveling from the left collarbone to the right collarbone. And as you exhale, use your imagination to travel the breath from the back of your right shoulder around your back to the back of your left shoulder. And so this is the path from dusk to dawn, or dawn to dusk, that cycle of time that begins and ends and begins and ends. And this is how we measure time. We move through time. And so find that breath again, breathe in, exhale, breathe out. Maybe noticing where you're spending a lot of time. Maybe noticing where you wish you wanted to spend more time. Let's noticing without any judgment. And then breathe in from the left to the right. From the right to the left. Exhale. Feel like you're coming back to yourself at the center so that you're able to mediate your time well. Make choices that you want. And then slowly, mindfully walk your hands back, everybody. Sit back onto your heels. And then any props that you use for child's pose, take them off into the side. So feel free to come onto one hip, send your legs out around you in front of you. And then if you have a chair or um, anything that you're gonna use for the edge, today and you don't have to have one, but it just helps the practice a little bit. I'm gonna show you the series and the setup that we're gonna do first. And then we're gonna go through the sequence, and then I'll go through the sequence again and repeat it. I'm gonna use a chair for the practice, um, but you can do this again with a couch edge, with the, with the edge of, um, I see some of you have like a, some, some of you have chairs or a bed, so that's perfect. And the, here's the series. You're gonna take your blocks and you're gonna have them handy next to you. So you're gonna come into some hip openers using our ledge or our chair. And we're gonna start with our left ankle 
really to the center of your chair. And then you're we're gonna recline yourself all the way back, everybody. So you're gonna take your right ankle on top of your left thigh, really try to get the foot about towards the middle of the knee. Make sure it's not hanging or dangling off. So here's the whole series. We're gonna come into each of these a little bit slower than I'm gonna demo. We're gonna come into a four square variation. We're gonna then take our hands down. We're gonna put our left heel right at the edge of the chair or the blanket or, or the, not the blanket, but whatever object we're using. And we're gonna lift up. We're gonna drop our hips back down. And then it's gonna look like a gomukasana. You're gonna cross your right thigh over your left thigh. And you're gonna, again, pick up your left heel and put it so it's a little bit more on the center of the chair. And then you're gonna come here and just rest, okay? So start on your back and then we'll switch sides. So start on your back, come all the way down. Let's start with the left foot. And I can see most of you so I can give you some feedback. Start with the left foot, everybody. Just place the foot so you have a little bit more balance in the middle of your chair or your chair-like object. And then pick up your right ankle. Take your right ankle really so it's more uh, right on top of the center of the knee. And then from here, open up your lungs. Flip your palms up and then really push down onto the back of your palms to lift both elbows up and think that the lift of the elbows turns your upper arm bone out of the shoulder. So there's a really big action of spreading the collarbones and then set the shoulders back down. Think the tips of the shoulder blades draw in and down. And notice everybody, if there's any sort of lift of your tailbone, you might have to adjust yourself back a little bit to really try to get the back of your tailbone flat as best as you can all the way down. And then notice where your right knee is. If your right knee is pulling a little bit more into your rib cage, really try to use your imagination to push your right knee out a little bit more towards the side. And then we're just gonna do some visualization and mapping of the pelvis from here. So all of this with your imagination, really try to use the imagination to get a little bit more squared and centered in your pelvis. So take the imagination to your pubic bone that's in front of your body. And then we're almost drawing a triangle. So there's a triangle facing up in the front of your pelvis. Your pubic bone is the top of the triangle. Your two frontal pelvic bones are the sides of the triangle. And then start to take your awareness and attention to your right pelvic bone. Think that your right pelvic bone moves out to the right a little bit, and then draw an imaginary line from your right pelvic bone to your left pelvic bone. Think that that right pelvic bone moves your left pelvic bone out a little bit more towards its own side. And then from there, draw an imaginary line from each pelvic bone in front of your body up towards your pubic bone. So it's right below your navel. You can even use your navel as that visualization. And then let's move to the back of the body. Start to draw an imaginary line from your tailbone up towards your hip points. And so start to feel your right hip. Move your right hip or your right buttock bone a little bit more out towards the right. And then draw an imaginary line to your back of your body, back of your pelvis to your left buttock bone. Think that moves your left hip or your left buttock bone out to its own side. And then draw an imaginary line up to your tailbone at your low back. And so this makes an equilateral triangle, one in the front facing up, one in the low body facing down. So it becomes a star of David, two points of the triangle facing away from one another. And then see if that just use, use the power of the imagination really just uses the focus to bring your pelvis a little bit more in alignment. And then from here, pick up your hands, turn your palms down so you can really grip the ground. Start to pick up your left heel, put your left heel on the edge of the chair. So some of us might stay here and that's okay. Some of us might choose to push your left foot into the chair and then lift your hips up. So you're stretching a little bit more through the low back. That's it. And then again, start to find that equilateral triangle with your pelvis. Push your right knee out to its own side. Think that your right buttock bone connects to the top of your left knee. 
and then think that your left buttock bone connects to the top of your right knee, making an X marks the spot in the center of your pelvis. And then again, use the imagination, right buttock bone, left knee, left buttock bone, right knee, X marks the spot in the center of the thighs and pelvis. And then slowly again, lower the hips down. Take your left foot again, all the way on top of the chair and then move your right thigh on top of your left thigh. So it's a little bit like an eagle wrap, everybody, of the legs, but it's gonna get into the hips a little bit more. And so from here, I like to put both heels on top of the chair or on top of the ledge and think that your inner thighs spin in a little bit more. But there's a fold at the hips from here. And again, you might have to adjust a little bit forward, a little bit back. Just taking a moment to pause and come into the hips. And then think of the inner thighs roll in a little bit to move the outer hips out a little bit so they're creating space across the low back and the sacrum. And then breathe into the torso, breathe into all four sides of the torso, the front, the back, the right, the left. Think that your shoulder blades release down and in to spread and open through your collarbones so there's more space in the lungs. And then take a big breath in. Exhale, let all that go. Take your right foot first, unwind your right foot, put your right foot onto the edge of the chair. And then bend your left knee, set your left foot onto the edge of the chair. So we're gonna do that whole series and sequence on the second side. We're gonna start with the right foot. Take your right foot about again towards the center of the chair. So it's really kind of, if you were to sit on the chair, you were gonna sit really into the center of the chair. And then just start with that four square variation. Take your left ankle right on top of the center of the right knee. So think that the center of your knee is really coming from the center line, like it's drawing a line down your quadricep up to your frontal hip point. And then think that that left knee moves out a little bit to the left and a little bit more closer towards the chair. So you're really using sort of this more passive activation of the thighs into the hips. And then take your palms, turn your palms down, push your hands down, lift your elbows up, the shoulder blades might start to lift a little bit. And then again, think that the push of the hands down widens and opens. It really spins your biceps a little bit more to the ceiling to turn your upper arm bone out of the shoulder, everybody. That's it. And then there's a spreading of the collarbones nice and wide. So when we do that, we're really creating more space for our lungs so that we're really bringing our awareness to breathe into the chest. And then again, let's do that same mapping. So for some of us, this is new to do a lot of this body mapping in these restorative poses, but it really helps us embody where we are so that we're really using the mind to bring a little bit more alignment and refinement to the pose. And so find the right buttock bone on this side. Think that there's a line from your right buttock bone to your left knee all of this with your imagination. And then find your left buttock bone, draw an imaginary line from your left buttock bone to your right knee. See if that moves your left knee out a little bit more towards the side. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. And then do that again, right buttock bone, left knee, left buttock bone, right knee, making an X marks the spot in the pelvis. And then slowly, we're gonna come out of this, Start to pick up your right foot, put your right foot onto the edge of the chair. So some of us might say this might be plenty of a stretch. And again, check in with what feels best to you today. Stay or start to push your right foot down to lift your hips up, creating a little bit more of a back bend, but also a little bit more of a hip opener. And then again, start to just take that line and bring awareness into the torso this time. Lengthen your torso a little bit longer. Notice that there's a deep fold into your right hip. Can you push your right heel down, lift your right bone up a little bit more. And think that there's a turn in of your right thigh to turn out your left thigh a little bit more. Stay for one more breath. If you lift it up, draw your hips towards the chair, then lower all down. Pick up your right foot again, put it in the center of the seat of the chair. That's it. And then scoot your left thigh on top of your right thigh, right thigh. So it's an eagle wrap of the legs. And then I like to, again, take my feet on top of the edge so that I'm really giving my feet a little bit more stability. And then again, push your hands down. 
See if you can turn your biceps a little bit more up towards the ceiling so there's that spreading of the collarbones, but the tips of the shoulder blades release down and in, and there's no tucking of the tailbone. The tailbone drops down as the pubic bone lifts forward and up towards the chest and sternum. And that's what's really going to create a little bit more of a fold, which is going to create more space into the sacrum of the low back. One of the biggest things I always hear is that at my low back, I'm doing yoga. So these poses are really gentle because they open up through the hips and the outer IT band. But what you're really doing is you're creating more space and awareness for your sacrum. So you're finding that those pinpoints in the body, your hip points, your pelvic bones, your pubic bone, your tailbone. So you can find a little bit more of those actions of turning in or turning out, which is really where you find more space. So notice where the tops of the thighs are. Turn the tops of the thighs in to open the tops of the hips out a little bit more. I think that turning into the thighs gives you more space to lengthen and open through the outer hips a little bit more. And then stay for a breath. Take a deep breath in. Full deep breath out. And then slowly unwind your left leg off of your right. Take both feet, everybody, to the edge of the chair or to the edge of the, that's it, yeah, Nancy, so on the top of the chair. Yeah, stay right there, good. So use the chair almost like a little bit of resistance. Push the heels, everybody, into the chair, and then think that push of the heels down and into the chair lifts your pubic bone up a little, little bit more, it drops down and in. I'll do that one more time. Push your heels into the chair, to lift your pubic bone forward and up. It's gonna tilt a little bit towards you and then start to drop your tailbone down and in. So you're finding a little bit more equilibrium in the body. From here, everybody, I'm gonna push um, a roll over onto one side, just sit up and look at me so we can come into just sort of kind of our second to last final pose. You're gonna want your two blocks and you're gonna want your two blocks. If you have books, you can use books, but if you don't have those props, you can also just opt up as well. You're also gonna want your blanket or your bolster if you have, or you have a bolster. So you're gonna take your, your blanket first and set up and you're gonna take your blanket and you're gonna fold it in half and then you're gonna put your blanket just off to the side. So watch the setup first. You're gonna take your two blocks and you're just gonna set them, I like to kind of set them close to me so I can grab them. And you're gonna start just like we ended. So you're gonna put your feet on the edge of the chair. You're gonna lift your hips up. And so I want you to go slow, especially if you have low back issues or tension, you might start and stay where we just were with the feet onto the edge of the chair, the hips on the ground. If you feel okay today, push your feet into the edge of the chair and then just start everybody with one block, lowest height underneath the sacrum at the low back. See how that feels. If you're really new to this, this might be plenty. If, if you want more and more actually gives you less movement in the low back, it's actually not gonna be more intense. It just, it's a sense of kind of getting comfortable with it. Take two blocks underneath the low back, but you really want to put it underneath the sacrum of the low back, and then that's gonna get you high enough so that you can straighten your legs. This is like amazing. Once you're here, I want you to take a blanket and put it underneath the left wall so you can't see this completely, but you're gonna have your arms straight out in a T, Turn your palms up. So when you do that, you're really opening your armpit, which is your lung, and opening across your collarbone. This feels amazing, okay? So come into one of those three variations, one that feels supportive for you, but feels like you can stay in for about the next five minutes. And we're gonna stay in this restorative back bend. And I'm gonna come look at the screen to give some help. So some of you I can see, some of you I can't. Yeah, good, Jennifer. That's that. Maybe you can give me a thumbs up, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. Yeah, sure. Charlotte, you need to get closer. I know it's going to take a little bit of getting out of. So yeah, even closer, even closer, even closer. So you 
want your thought. That's it. Yeah, I know. So much better, right? I hope. Yes, that's so much better. Good. And then really allow the low back to rest in. Nancy, I think you need to get closer too. Good. So make sure that you're able to really stay in this pose and breathe. So with a lot of these restorative poses and postures, we want to put a little bit of work on the body, but we want it to feel like effort as well as ease. And so there is a little bit of work here. And then start to notice and observe maybe where you need to adjust a little bit. Yeah, it takes some getting into Nancy. Good work. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, I think that I think the pillow might be too high. I think the pillow might be too high. Yeah, I just wouldn't use the pillow if it's if it's putting you off balance. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's fine. And you can even go down a level if that's if it feels like it's un, it's not comfortable. So looking from here, really keeping the mind nice and active when we come into these postures. And so start to draw your awareness just into your feet. Our feet are like our root. It's like a plug and a socket. We want to have a good charge to get through our day. We don't want to start our day with an uncharged electronic device in these times, right? You want to be fully charged and ready for the day. And so think that the feet are like the three, three prongs plugging into a socket. Think that the plug in gives you that lift up. So there's currency running from your feet to the crown of your head and then coming around yourself. So there's a plug in to really bring you into that energy and full circuit and space in the body so you can get through all 24 hours hours of your day. And then start to notice the pinky toe edges of the feet. All of this without your imagination. Draw an imaginary line from the pinky edges of your feet to your inner heel. Find the big toe mounds of your feet. Draw an imaginary line from your big toe mounds to your outer heel. So there's an X marks a spot in the center of your feet. and then bring your awareness up to your knees. Draw an imaginary line from your right knee to your left buttock bone that's at the back. Draw an imaginary line from your left knee to your right buttock bone. There's an X in the center of your thighs and pelvis. And then start to travel up the body. Draw an imaginary line from your top of your right hip to the back of your left shoulder blade top of your right hip to the back of your left shoulder blade. And then find your left hip. Find the front of your left hip, draw an imaginary line to the back of your right shoulder blade. So there's an X in the center of the torso. And then travel that imagination all the way up. Find the tip of your right shoulder blade, draw a line all the way around to the front of your left collarbone, from the tip of your left shoulder blade, draw an imaginary line to the front of your right collarbone, and then find an X in the center of your chest. And then find the front of your right collarbone, draw an imaginary line from the front of your right collarbone around your back to the back of your left eye. Find the front of your left collarbone, draw an imaginary line around your back to the back of your right eye. And then think that the back of your right eye moves up to your third eye. Think the back of your left eye moves up to your third eye because you're really finding yourself in your center. And then travel back down to your feet. Take an inhale, breathe in from your feet up to your third eye. 
around your back, travel all the way back down to the bottom and soles of your feet. Use a big exhale to come all the way back to yourself at the center. Before King prepares for battle, he has a map. And so think about your body as this map that you just used with your mind, drawing, using that ima imagination so that you notice where your weaknesses are, you notice where your strengths are. So you're really becoming the king of your own personal territory. And king really isn't a gender in this instance. It's really more of a specific role. And so be the king or the queen or um, of your own personal territory, your own domain. So you know how to plug in well, you know how to use your energy throughout the day, and you know when to take a rest. So you get to navigate around your own personal sphere. Take a big breath, inhale, then begin to exhale. We'll slowly begin to come out of this. So the best way to do this is not to just pull the blank, to pull the props out from underneath the low back. Start by first putting your feet onto the edge of the chair or couch if you used it, and just, <clears throat> just take one away. Just take one away first. Keep your low back onto that first level. It's almost like you're coming down the floors a few steps. And then when it feels okay for you, push your feet into the edge of the chair, lift your hips up, and then remove the second one. Think your hips move towards the chair to lower and drop your hips all the way down. And then we're gonna stay here for a full minute to rest the low back. Keep your feet again onto the edge of the chair, or yeah, Charlotte, you did that one. Well, if you want to keep your legs and just lengthen your calves, feel free to do that. But I want you to come back to that first sensation that we had of <clears throat> really using the pubic bone to lift up towards the sternum. So you're really lengthening the tailbone down. So it's not this idea of tucking everybody. It's really creating space across the sacrum. And to do that, you have to really open up the pelvis and the hip. So this is a full, right? This is a hip crease, which is is gonna release all tension, or not all tension, but hopefully as much tension as we can into the low back. So stay here for a full minute. And really give, your give yourself the opportunity to completely rest. And then notice where your left shoulder is. Notice where your right shoulder is. As you inhale, use imagination to travel from dawn to dusk. <clears throat> And then exhale, round your back from dusk till dawn. Seeing yourself in your whole day. Putting yourself in all your circumstances, maybe the circumstances you still have to navigate later. Maybe the things that you're not sure that you have to navigate later that might come along the way. That might be like that little sneak attack, staying with that imagery of a battle. And then use this as a tool. Use this breath practice to really know that you can navigate yourself well. That there will be bumps in the road. That you might have to take a different road. But feel yourself in that circumstance. Notice that the sun rises, the sun sets, but that's a circumstance. Nature reminds us of pattern. Take a breath in, exhale, breath out. And then roll off to your right side, everybody. You can just inch your way away from the chair. You don't have to get up. And then we're gonna set up for our last posture. You have a bolster. We're gonna come into just a, a, a Baddha Konasana using the bolster. Take your bolster if you have it behind your back and then draw the soles of the feet together. I really encourage using two blocks if you have them or you can use your blankets. Tuck something so that it's underneath the middle of your thigh 
so that when you come into this pose, it's really allowing the hips and the pelvis to open. So this is really taking the body in the opposite direction that we just did. Really act to that openness, but it's also really opening the chest so that you can find a relaxation in space. If you don't have a bolster, you can also just do this flat on your back, everybody. You can take a bolster, or not a bolster, you can take a blanket rather, and roll your blanket up. Try to get, if you have a blanket or if you have a pillow, try to get it so it's really along your spine and make sure that your head, the most important part is that your head is actually on something. So if you have a shorter pillow, set up one of your blocks so that it's behind your head, but feel that your neck is in line with your collarbones, that it's not above it too high, because so that's gonna create straining in the neck. So if anything, you want the head lower than the collarbones, but make sure that your head is really resting fully onto a bolster or onto a prop. Yeah, but everyone looks really good. We'll be here for a few minutes, just taking Shavasana and resting. Scan the body from the head to the toes, perhaps noticing if there's any tension in the jaw or in the face. Relax the tongue from the roof of the mouth. And come onto a place of ease and rest. And gentle or rest is often a way of plugging back in. Much like we plug our electronic devices in, we set it aside and we leave them alone so that those three prongs can get into the socket well so it can be recharged. And so turn off any notifications that might be going off in your mind. One way to do that is not by controlling the breath, but by just being aware of the breath, the pranayama practice. And so maybe imagine the body in the front of the body. Be feeling the breath come up the front of the body. And then imagine the back of the body, imagine the breath coming down the back of the body. So it moves up and down, left and right, front and back. And imagine the breath starting at the front of the right foot. As you inhale, travel the breath to the front of the left collarbone. And as you exhale, move from the left collarbone around your back, down the back to the bottom of the right foot. And imagine again, the breath travels. Inhale from the right foot to the left collarbone. Exhale from the left collarbone to the right foot. This is the flow of seasons. Just like the breath, there's Four, four counts of the breath, the in, the pause, the out, the pause, and the four seasons remind us of patterns in nature, reminds us that there's a rhythm, there's a flow, there's a season of ripening in summer, there's a season of harvest in fall, Winter is where things die, and then there's the rebirth of spring. And this time moves around us. 
much like the 24 hours of your time, we get to choose how we spend it. So maybe seeing if there's a season that you're in in your life right now, we're in the physical spring season, but maybe you're in a harvest season of a project. Maybe you're in winter where a piece needs to be closed. Maybe something needs to, a project needs to die off so that you can rebirth something else in spring. Yourself in the middle of all of those things, put yourself in the middle of your 24 hours in the day, your seasons, where you are. And then breathe in, feel the front, the back, the left, the right, the up, the down. Exhale, come back to yourself and all the circumstances. And then take your right hand to your heart. Take your left hand to your navel. And really feel this as physically touching yourself in the center of your being. In yoga, we call this our shashuna nadi or our tai chi or again in our yang, our male and our female. But really, it's this practice of finding yourself in the middle of all these things, all these circumstances, so that you become a good articulator and a good mediator. So maybe you come back to that mantra that you said at the beginning, maybe it was one word. Maybe it's just something. Maybe it's just giving yourself an hour to recharge. And then thank yourself. Take a deep breath in. Open the mouth. Exhale. Let it out. And that's the end of our class, everybody. You're welcome to stay. I know you're at home. So if you want to stay longer and linger, feel free to stay. If you want to roll up, I'll turn off the mic. Just say hello if you'd like. If not, have a wonderful weekend. It's hard to believe it's already Memorial Weekend, right?